Hey guys, my name is Don and you're watching my channel Don Astronomy. I've just bought myself a new guide scope. It's an SV Bonnie 50mm guide scope. Has a focal length of 190mm and is f3.8. Now, this telescope, little guide scope, was, was very cheap. I bought this on eBay for 109 Australian dollars. Now, I don't normally buy stuff that's that cheap, but at that price, I had to try it. I went to the website, had a look at the the actual guide scope, and it looked quite good, and I thought, well, I've got to give it a go for that price. Now, the reason I bought this is because I'm actually sharing one guide scope between two rigs at the moment. I have a little Testar 120mm guide scope that I use on my Star Adventurer rig with my Evo Guide 50 ED as my main scope, and it's really well matched for that because it's half the focal length. But with, uh, at the moment, I've been shooting um, at full focal length with my Edge HD, and I use an off-axis guider for that, but now I've gone back to shooting with my Hyperstar, because it's summer over here, and I don't have a guide scope, so I pinched my Testar one and using it on that, but the focal length is just not quite um, long enough and my guiding hasn't been so great and I need two rigs anyway to get up and running so I thought for the price of 109 Australian dollars I'm going to give this a go. So now let's uh, put this together and have a look and maybe do a, some testing and see how a $109 guide scope works. Okay. Now I will time lapse this. So far, so pretty simple, straightforward. that's okay to take out. I hope so. Maybe straight back in just in case it's not. Obviously this will take some adjustment later but I think for now Just start there. Now, presume these go. In there, and I my camera will slide into that. That's a little test uh, 30 millimeter guide scope I was telling you about, which I use for my Evo Guide for TED. It's a perfect match for that. And it's a great little scope, but it's not a fantastic scope uh, for the focal length I'm using with the bigger telescope, as a guide scope, that is. So we're going to uh, change this over. Now I've got to now make that bracket join onto that bracket. We'll see how we go with that. Yes, I am in luck, but I may need to, as you can see there, I'm going to have to find a longer bolt that all the way through there, but at least for now, that should bolt on. My camera only goes so far. This can always screw off, need be. I guess we'll just start there. 
Meanwhile, I'm going to go and find another screw for that. But you don't need to see that boring part. So, as it turns out, luck would have it that that's a 5mm thread. And I have a 5mm here. Which is lucky. And just long enough to, to reach, which is even better. Marvellous. They don't match. It doesn't matter. You don't see it. And it works. Okay, so that's the little telescope, the little guide scope all put together now. I don't know if you can see that very well. It's actually quite well made, like considering the price, I'm pretty happy with with the purchase. So it's got a fast focuser there, which is just, it slides in and out, locking it up. Uh, in my case, I have to have it all the way out. And then there's a micro focuser here. That's the lock for the micro focuser. And that is really smooth. Um, very, very smooth. I'm quite impressed with that. And it feels like you would be very, it'd be very easy to uh, to focus. But we will see when we go to test it out later. But overall, I mean, for the price, I'm I'm really happy. Let's hope the guiding performance is as good, uh, because then if it is. It's going to work out to be a really good buy for the price. Okay, so lucky the cable that come with the 174mm Mini is long enough to reach my telescope and point out the door, which is going to make it easy for me to focus. Uh, much easier than trying to focus on a star anyway. It gives me a good starting point. So let's see how we go here. Going to open up sharp cap, I think, for this one. Now, that's my camera there, and as I suspected, it's all just white. Um, let's drop this back. And nothing seems to be happening. Let me have a look, I'll move this. Oh, oh looks like something's happening there. That's all the way out. I hope I've got enough length on this. Oh, I've got a bit more. Look at that. That's good. A tree. I've got a wasp flying around my head again. So in PhD2 now, and I'm just creating a new profile for the new little guide scope using my 1744. and recording a dark library now at 40 times speed. So into Sequence Generator Pro and don't forget I have to go into my profile and tell it to use that guide scope now and that new profile that I created in PhD2. Otherwise it'll default to something that's no longer there. And back into PhD2 just to tell it now to uh, use that first up. So at the moment I'm just trying to focus and um, the seeing is quite bad. Um, I thought that halo around the star was a bad sign for this little telescope. Um, it's just we have bad seeing at the moment. So now what I need to do is I'm going to do it to a bright star. I'm going to slew my telescope to that now. And what I need to do is uh, align the two. So first of all, I'm going to get my primary scope, which is on the, um, the right there. And I'm going to center that into the crosshairs. So I know I've got my primary scope centered. Once I've done that, I'll now adjust my little guide scope until it's also right in the center of the sensor. And then I know that uh, 
both telescopes, the guide scope and the, and the imaging scope are aligned together. This new calibration assistant is great. The feature now that you can slew to a position near the celestial equator is a bit of a game changer for me. It just takes a lot of that time out of the process of setting up prior to imaging. Once I've run this calibration assistant, um, it means that I'm pretty much right to go. I've done the focus. I've aligned the two telescope centers together on a star. I've changed my profiles and now I have done a calibration guiding. So we're guiding now and um, the guiding is not amazing but it's better than I expected. When you consider the scene um, it's doing a good little job so far and it's doing a much better job than my little uh, Testa guide scope was doing, um, and as you can see there, the thing. But have a look at Pallades, look at the, the halos around those stars. So, I think once, and also, I'm, I'm only guiding at one second there, as you can see. So, once I change that to a couple of seconds and the seeing is better, I think this little guide scope is going to deliver quite well.